39 days sounds like a long time. It's really not. <laughs> this episode was sponsored by Audible. Audible is the leading platform for audiobooks with a massive variety of choices. I personally use Audible every time I travel or just have a bit of downtime. A book I've been listening to recently is Michael Pillsbury's The Hundred Year Marathon, China's Secret Strategy to Replace America as the Global Superpower. I'm going to leave a link in the description for the audiobook, as well as a link to sign up for a seven-day free trial to Audible. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the OSCP Struggle Bus. I think this is going to be week five. I know that's going to be what I put in the title, but it should be around week five. I'm going to start off with a little bit of an update, kind of tell you where I've been since the last episode. Even though the last episode, I guess I didn't really give too many updates. I just kind of told you why I was doing the OSCP. You could be that one here, but I'll kind of give an update and tell you about things that I've learned. I'll give you a specific update on one thing that I've learned very, very hard. It was kind of a difficult lesson to get. I'll tell you about probably my favorite part of the OSCP so far, and it actually happened pretty recently. Then I will give a quick update on what you're going to see next. I've actually got a little bit of an announcement and I'll talk about that after I give you an update on kind of the stress side of the OSCP because I think that's something that people overstate and understate at the same time. I think I've gotten about six boxes since the last time I did an update. Those have been just kind of easy one-offs and some of them have been me grinding for an entire day on one box. You know, a lot of times that's been my fault. As I'll talk about here in a second, I haven't enumerated well enough. I, every Every time I think I'm done, I realize that I missed something else. Um, and I actually realized recently that I missed an entire, basically half of the internet. But you know, I've learned a lot of hard lessons and I've learned a lot of easy lessons. ExploitDB has been by far my favorite resource. You can view the entire exploit and all of the notes and how it works and all of that fun stuff. Did I just bump my mic? Yeah, a little bit. So ExploitDB has been fantastic. It was really kind of I've been using it from the beginning, but I didn't realize just how helpful it can be to actually read over the exploit source code in just such a clear format. I actually realized that one of my good friends had published one of the exploits that I was using in the OSCP, which is kind of cool. Easily the most obvious yet difficult lesson that I learned has been do not sleep on UDP. By that, I mean UDP is an entire half of the internet, basically, just how the internet works. At first, I didn't realize I was missing out on it because Nmap does not, it doesn't map um, UDP, most UDP ports by default. So I didn't really realize that I wasn't scanning UDP ports on a lot of these, um, a lot of these boxes. And then I kind of realized that I wasn't doing it. I was like, ah, oh, well, it's not a big deal. I mean, you know, what, what could a stateless protocol give me? And then I realized that it can give you the exact same stuff as TCP. You can get exploits, you can get information disclosure, literally everything that you can get with TCP, you can get with UDP as well. That would probably be one of my bigger pieces of advice. Actually run the UDP scans. They take a while because that's how UDP works, but definitely run the UDP scans and don't don't ever get into the mindset of, okay, I've enumerated enough, time to move on to exploitation or time to move on to the next phase. It's just not really how it works. It's not like a, okay, I'm done with this phase, I'm gonna move on to the next. It's a constant cycle. You have to enumerate to find out more information in order to, even if you've already got a, a limited shell there, you still have to enumerate what's already on the box in order to you know, escalate your privileges. So enumeration just never stops. When people say that it's the most important part of the OSCP, they're, they're not lying. And that's because it's pretty much 90% of what you'll do on the OSCP. Probably the biggest ROI that I've gotten off of the OSCP so far has been the buffer overflow module. I have done, I mean, it must be half a dozen or more buffer overflow tutorials. Like this is how it works. Here are graphs that explain it. And you know, here, here's how it works in practice. And they've been incredible. I, I've, I've watched some really good tutorials, but I don't think I've seen one that breaks it down as well as the OSCP instructor did. Just kind of the clarity and showing you how to write your own scripts in order to explain the concepts that he was talking about. Just the very clear and understandable way that he broke it down in practice which was the most important part. A lot of these are just the theory of buffer overflows and the, it, it, it helps to understand the theory, but for me at least, I have to see it in practice. I have to understand, okay, this is, this is what he's doing right now. This is the part of the theory that that falls into. So I had kind of pushed off the buffer over, the overflow module for a while because it's like, I think like eight videos totaling probably over an hour. 
I kind of pushed that off because I was like, I, I at least want to find the box that I'm going to use the buffer overflow exploit against. Finally, I was just like, okay, this is a good day for me to just go ahead and knock this out. And you know, I wrote down tons of notes. And I, I think now once I do find the box to use the buffer overflow exploit against, I understand it well enough to where it won't take near as long just because it, it was broken down incredibly clearly. So that was a moment of just relative confidence. It was like, okay, I understand a relatively complex part of exploitation. I, I, I'm not just throwing stuff into you know, Metasploit and exploiting. I actually understand what I'm doing here. That was a momentary reprieve from quite a bit of stress. <laughs> so I've got a little bit, I think today is day number 39. So I've got 39 more days until the OSC or until my lab access is done, not until the exam, but until my lab access is done. After that point, I'll make the decision on whether to extend or to go ahead and take the exam. 39 days sounds like a long time. It's really not. <laughs> you know, with the exam upcoming, I, I really don't want to extend again just because, you know, I've I've got a lot of family businesses coming up relatively soon that I don't really want to butt up against. So I really want to get the exam over with and obviously pass the first time. 39 days is, it's a lot shorter when you're dealing with such a massive undertaking. This entire lab, you know, I, I've knocked out probably a dozen, a dozen boxes by now and I barely feel like I've scratched the surface. It's, it really is, you know, a beast of a lab exercise. So the stress is getting real, kind of, looking at the book and looking at the videos and seeing how long I've got to go and how many different concepts I have yet to learn. It, it kind of makes me feel better because I'm like, okay, well, I haven't learned everything yet. So obviously I can't have, you know, rooted all of these boxes, but it still is kind of disheartening to see how short of a time period I've got left. But that does mean that I'm incredibly blessed to have a job that puts a very high priority on training. So they've been really great about the amount of time that I've had to take for this training. And, you know, I've warned all of my friends and family like, hey, you know, I've been gone a lot for this training and I'm going to have to be gone a lot more because I'm going to have to focus a lot more on it. Um, hopefully that will mean more videos. You would think that it would be less videos, but actually these videos don't take that long to film and they don't take that long to edit. So if I have more to report from the OSCP, I'll hopefully have more content for the, for the videos. You know, I feel like I'm making progress. It's, it's slower progress than I would like, but you know, it is progress. Something, you know, that, that's actually helped a lot is I've, I've kind of browsed Twitter and Reddit on my off time to look for tips. And there've actually been some really good tricks, like even if it's just like one line scripts, like bash scripts or something like that, there've been some really great tips online that I've found that have helped me a lot, like literally in practice. I've noticed that a lot of my followers on Twitter are actually taking the OSCP at the exact same time as me, and they kind of are finding these like little one-off things. You can share tips. You can't say, here's box A, attack it with B, and you get C. Obviously that's cheating. You can at least give like, here's how you do this, like kind of general concepts and little bash script one-liners and things like that. So I've found a ton of those and I'm, I'm kind of slowly compiling them into a list that I'm hopefully going to put into a blog after I'm done with the exam. If you guys have any tips or tricks, go ahead and leave a comment on this video or send me a tweet or a DM or something like that and let me know what kind of tips you have. I'm going to throw them into a blog post with everybody's Twitter profile if you want it to and just kind of compile them all in one place. I've seen a couple of blogs like that. You know, a lot of them have kind of been missing context and stuff like that. I'll just be like, here's a bash script, one liner, you know, hopefully you can understand what, what happens with it. So yeah, send, you know, send me a tweet or a comment or something like that and just let me know like your favorite OSCP tricks. Speaking of comments, I was going to put it in the intro to this video, but I don't think I'm going to end up doing that. I passed 250 subs because my scamming the scammer video like blew up out of nowhere. I didn't realize people liked that kind of content because it was just kind of me messing around with a you know random LinkedIn scammer. I'm going to do a Q&A. There are going to be a couple of different ways that you can send me questions. You can leave a comment on this video obviously or shoot me a tweet. You can, if, if you don't want to do it through DM, you can just send me a tweet and use the hashtag VikingQs or you can donate like a dollar I think is the minimum on Patreon and attach a question to your donation on Patreon. I'll leave all of those links below in the description. Obviously, if you donate, like that's a huge help to me. So you know, I'll prioritize those questions, obviously, but I'll try to get to everybody's a Q&A video 
you know, depending on how many questions I get, it should be a relatively lengthy one. And feel free to ask questions about anything. A lot of you know kind of similar things to what I do, so feel free to ask any questions that you want. And you know, if I can't answer them, I'll probably send you a DM or something like that saying, yeah, here are the reasons why I can't answer that. Shoot me your questions on Twitter, Patreon, or YouTube, and I will make a Q&A video once I've gotten a ton of them. You know, if you've got any questions that you'd like me to know, that you'd like me to answer about Chinese, about information security, about weightlifting, I don't care. Just ask as many questions as you want and I'll try to get to all of them in their own video. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions or any comments or anything like that. It kind of helps me not just be talking to a camera. Obviously, likes and dislikes, they kind of help me know how I'm doing. And subscriptions just kind of notify you every time that I upload a video like this. So if you're interested in this kind of content, leave a um, comment below and tell me what you'd like to see more of and subscribe so that you know when I actually upload it. But yeah, thank you guys. Take it easy.